um, well, at a high level, the agenda today is to go over our stand-ups, and then we'll do a, a, I'll give a quick update on the foundation, and then we'll cover um, action items, so things that uh, people are working on, and then go into open discussion at the end. Um, so to kick it off, does anyone have a uh, update on their stand-up, like what they've been working on, blockers, um, or what they're working on in the coming week? go. Um, I opened up an issue last night with some suggested topics for the first few blogs in our blog series. So um, I think now I have to find the issue. <laughs> but if we I think uh, that's something that we could maybe agree on in the next um, week or so. And um, that way we can just start drafting. I, I uh, Jason asked a question about whether we need more content um, to kickstart things. And I think that we have a pretty good amount from um, the call for written contributions a little while back. So um, I think the topics that I've suggested are like an intro blog um, on Meet, Meet the Governance Working Group where we profile some of our members and talk about everyone's ambitions. And another blog on um, our governance inspirations. Um, I think this group has discovered some really good resources, um, both conventional and unconventional. So I thought that would be a cool way to give people a glimpse into our thinking and show how Blockstack is trying to take a unique approach to governance. Um, and a third blog on the status of the foundation um, whenever we're ready to share further details there. So those were my suggested topics for the first three blogs. Um, if anyone has any other ideas um, or, you know, major objections to those, um, please feel free to share your feedback in the comments below the issue. Yeah, I think, so I opened that last night and um, I, I put these on the agenda for open discussion later, but um, I also have been doing a little work on a new moderation system for the community, um, something that I'd like to propose to the governance working group and the wider community um, when that's finished. So we we'll talk a little bit about that. And I've been doing some thinking around the work that we could do on coming up with some con contributing guidelines for our GitHub repos. That's not something that really exists yet. So I've been looking at what other projects do and um, seeing how we could take a lead on developing some really good ones for block stacks repos. Yeah, no blockers other than, no blockers really, but would love some help and input from, from this group. Great, thanks Jenny. Um, yeah, and so we'll go a little more into that in the discussion topic, um, but we'll go around and see if there's more stand-ups. I can do one real quick. So what I've been working on is is the same thing I keep saying I'm working on, and that's just in GitHub. But I appreciate everybody kind of jumping on board. We've got a little more activity going, and I look forward just to linking, consolidating, and getting a good flow to this. So we feel like, hey, we've brought up issues, we've handled them, and we just keep them moving. So I look forward to seeing more comments in there and no other, no other blockers on my end. We can see them. Great. Um, anyone else uh, with a stand up? And welcome, Dan. I saw you just joined. So we're just going through stand ups. Um, you know what people have been working on, and and what um, you know if there's any blockers. So if there's um, no other uh, stand-up updates, I'm happy to give my update on the foundation. Um, so from uh, Blockstack PBC still, um, the, the path is nearing in which I will actually be officially part of uh, the foundation. So um, the entity is set up as we announced uh, last week. The website is now live. Um, you can check that out, stacks.org. Um, but the next step is um, making an announcement about the foundation's existence, as well as our early board members. Um, so in order to kind of set up the, the entity in order to accept um, these like drafted bylaws that we've put in, um, in place, which uh, as we sort of discussed are mainly just the default. So we still have room to give uh, feedback on those. They haven't been accepted into the uh, foundation yet that will really require a board to do so. So 
the approach has been to have a three person board as a stepping stone to get to a larger board. So in those bylaws, it kind of lays out how board members can be removed, how board members can be added, but really looking to work with community to help find um, the right uh, people to add to the board in a future um, date. So, you know, that could be anywhere from five members, you know, I've heard advice like no more than nine because then it becomes like a zoo. So there are plenty of seats in which we can, um, you know, have different uh, opinions, different thought leaders who can be very helpful to the governance of the actual organization, the foundation. Um, so those folks will help make sure that all of these other governance things are in place. So like a, a technical committee, more around technical changes. So the board will not be making decisions on that, but they can help um, empower the technical committee. So these are the, uh, the next pieces that come, but uh, we will be announcing uh, very soon, um, potentially even as early as tomorrow, just the announcement publicly that the foundation exists and, and there are these early board members. Um, so that's sort of what uh, we've been working on. Um, I'm happy to, uh, you know, if there's questions, we can go into that in discussion as well. Um, and yeah, I'll, I'll leave it there in case there's any other um, stand-ups. If not, we'll move on to our action item list. Okay, so I'm gonna just, uh, let me see if I can just share these um, working group uh, action item list. Uh, let's see. So good morning. Was, hi, good morning, Philip. We were just finishing up um, stand ups in case you have a stand up. You've been very busy studying, studying, studying. Very good, but good advance. Okay, now I think I found my. Desktop with the. Okay. So can everyone see that? Um, so the action items today, the first thing is the community survey. Um, so it's around what we should do with the results. So I know Lane gave him his update in the Discord channel um, that he was going to go through and kind of synth synthesize um, some of the early results. There were 57 responses to the survey. Um, so, you know, it's, it's a, a, um, a good number. I don't know if it's like statistically significant in terms of some of the answers, but I think it will give just like a, a good um, introduction to some of the community that exists. So in terms of what we should do next, I don't know if folks had ideas of, you know, should we publish these somewhere? Should we um, create, uh, you know, sort of share the results in GitHub and then if things change, we can update them accordingly. Um, I'm open to, to hear thoughts from this group. Yeah, and if you scroll down a little bit further too, Lane actually commented in this issue. Um, so you'll see a little okay. bit of the info there. And it sounded like we were going to start with the um, like first order insights, as he said, just some basic information that he can glean from the top. And then we have the other, um, we actually, I think that's linked to the forum post, but I wanted to find, and I'll post in here, the issue that involved the community survey and we can funnel the comments there as well. So let me grab that for everyone real quick. Thank you. Oh, and other than dropping that link in, though, I think this is the this is the basic idea. Unless anybody has any input or would like to see something different, uh, what, what what I thought it was going to be like uh, for each um, um, for each question, you know, is to divide the, the surveys in. Um, um, I say, and put all the questions in the same question all together, and 
of course not losing the original reference uh, so like uh, question one two three four whatever and then um, and then which survey came up so it will be yeah, okay but one to fifty seven so then we'll we'll just put them all each one that will re was responded in, a, in all together in order to to have a, like a whole idea of what they're talking about each uh, answer and then if we need to correlate uh, among the different responses in order to to see that uh, then we can go back also to, to the original one but then that that what that way could be uh, published in terms of um, of of questions you see uh, of course it's uh, it gives you the, the trend and, and, the, and the ideas and all that. Well, that's how we did it. Um, several surveys, especially in, in, in terms of research and development, but uh, um, it really helps sometimes. That's great. So um, what it sounds like is, you know, being able to see like all of that initial data is, is important. And maybe um, I think Lane, I uh, can actually share just like all of the pure output. So he was going to do some analysis, but if you're interested in kind of going deeper on the um, the data itself, I'm sure we could see about you know how to do that or just make sure that the data is anonymized so that um, it's uh, you know not completely transparent like who's whose survey is, but um, being able to give more granular detail there. So we could follow up with that. Yes, and I just went ahead. So I dropped a link to the original um, governance survey issue in GitHub in the chat here. And then I also just made a mention of one of the open issues as well as this call. So we've got it all kind of linked together now. Great. Thank you, Jason. So if there's any more comments on the community survey, um, we can. <clears throat> I just wanted to mention about the, that Lane mentioned, um, if anyone was interested in helping us when it got to the stage after he's reviewed and uh, when it gets to the stage, which I think Philip was mentioning, um, looking over the initial goals and then looking over the, um, each of the answers and being able to determine, you know, what is the general community response. Um, I just wanted to mention that. Okay, thanks, Juliet. Yeah, yeah, so that sounds like we'll have a um, call to action once he's gone through some of it. So we'll follow up with Lane on that. Uh, the next action item was around the blog post. Um, and I know that there was um, some work that, you know, as Jenny mentioned, uh, just around the project board and how to kind of um, collaboratively work on making sure that we're documenting the things that we've learned, the things that um, we've done, and then also just who the members of the governance uh, working group are. Um, I think that it's very timely as we are now um, moving more operations underneath the foundation uh, that can continue to be a home to, to help um, highlight and encourage um, more people to be, like take an active role in the governance process. I don't know if you wanted to add a little more, Jenny, in terms of um, like next steps or actions you'd want to take. Sure. Yeah, I think um, the biggest next step is just agreeing on these first few topics. Um, like I said, I think that we do have enough content from the recent written contributions to get um, a good few blogs going. And I think I mentioned in this call last week um, that we have a lot of great content and I would hate to dilute any of, of the commentary from this group. So having a series of shorter blogs is probably the most effective way to communicate. Um, I'm just like looking toward the future. I'm excited about the prospect of these blogs being something that community members really look forward to and having them be, you know, like a semi-monthly sort of um, release or, you know, whatever cadence that we 
um, decide on. That's me maybe getting ahead of myself. Um, so because I, you know, I, I don't think it's necessary to give ourselves any more uh, work than, than what we need to take on. But um, I, you know, I would say that we should start with these first few, um, whatever topics we're comfortable with. Um, I mentioned earlier the, the topics that I've suggested are like a meet the governance working group um, blog where we profile everyone and share a little more about what our ambitions are with our work here. Um, a second blog introducing where we've um, drawn a lot of our, our ideas from. I think this group has done such an amazing job doing research and being really thorough in our thinking. So I think that would be something that um, would not only be good to share with our community, but um, to leave as an artifact for other communities that are also working on governance um, and a blog introducing the foundation, which I know um, we'll have one with the announcement. So maybe we could take a, a bit of a different direction with um, how we want to approach the work that we've been doing on the foundation side of things from um, this group. Yeah, um, any questions or, or comments um, from folks here? Any major objections to um, the topics that have been suggested? Um. I think this is great. And maybe, you know, I see four really great topics here. I wonder if we can um, kind of as uh, has been added, if we can decide on two or three, maybe it's even one or two yeah. um, blog posts. And I think um, to your point that these are in GitHub and people can write comments below. So for example, introducing who are the people in this working group that could start with a series of just answers from individuals saying, you know, kind of giving a little bit about your background, what brought you um, to participate in the governance working group or what do you hope to achieve with that? Maybe um, something like that we could start as a first trial and how we collaboratively bring all of this um, information together. But I'm open to thoughts of, from others on, um, on whether that makes sense. Agree? Cool. Yeah, I think um, I've got some of that info from people and um, I'm happy to sort of chase <laughs> more info down um, in the next week or so. Um, so I suppose I can take the lead on on drafting of a first draft of the first blog if we're cool with the first one being an, an intro to the governance working group um, and have something a little more substantial to show the group in the next week or so. Um, and from there we can we can try to we can try to publish pretty quickly as well. Um, oh I should also open an issue about where we want this blog to live. Um, I assume that moving forward the Stacks Foundation will have its own blog. Um, I was thinking we could use Sigil uh, for the time being and um, move all of that over and share it on other platforms once we're ready to do so. Yeah, yeah, so we will have um, a blog. Um, right now there's one default with our <laughs> foundation website, but I would love for more of this stuff to be hosted um, on more Blockstack tools. So maybe we can cross post to begin with um, uh, and eventually migrate everything over to um, so yeah, like one of the block stack uh, decentralized blog. Cool. Thanks. That's it for, for me on the blog post. So. Great. Um, and then, yeah, if, if folks, um, you know, some of those other uh, blog posts, if you have comments now that you want to comment, I think adding those to GitHub, it doesn't have to be. Um, you know, we can kind of focus on getting one published, but those other ones, if you want to go ahead and start weighing in or if you have thoughts or ideas, those um, different cards are great places to leave comments um, and we can go from there. Uh, nice work, thank you. Great. Um, so the next uh, sort of action item we have here is on the SIPs governance proposal. Um, so this is the document that uh, Lane had helped put together and shared with the community. Um, so this uh, SIP process 
Um, we've had engineers from Blockstack PBC weigh in um, because to date the SIPs process has largely been um, managed by Blockstack PBC, but as part of our decentralization, this whole uh, process will um, be moved under the foundation in terms of coordinating the SIPs process, but um, any individual can contribute to a SIP, which is uh, you know, writing a proposal of what can be improved or not improved, uh, or you know, what should be improved in the SACS blockchain. Um, so I think the probably the ask here is just um, if you haven't had a chance to read through it, to read through and add any comments you may have about the, the process itself. I think the next steps, um, I know Lane is not here, but the next steps is to resolve a number of the comments that are open. Um, so, you know, questions around like um, specific types of, you know, uh, how a SIP gets accepted or what are the stages. For example, if, if everyone agrees that a new upgrade should happen, um, the SIP proposal may get approved, but it won't actually get implemented unless it's adopted by miners. So kind of just distinguishing what does that state mean if it's approved, but um, there are actually other people who have to make it um, to do work in order for it to exist or that upgrade to happen. So I think some of those open questions are um, where I'd love to see more, more feedback from this group. Um, especially given all the research that's been done <laughs> of what other people do or how they name those different stages to give clarity on what what is um, approved but maybe not like fully accepted yet. Excellent. And anybody looking for the link to that shared document, it's actually in that issue that's linked right there from proposal uh, proposal number one. So inside of there in the comments is the doc. Inside of the doc is a ton of comments and a lot of really good information. So definitely recommend everybody getting in there and dropping any thoughts that, that they have as well. Thank you for showing that. Yeah, it's, it's, uh, it may seem like a long document, but the first two or three pages are just um, the really great background kind of summarizing how other uh, projects use their improvement proposal processes, processes. Um, so, uh, yeah, if you're new to um, this type of uh, proposal, I think that it, you know, Lane did a great job of, of giving a really high level overview of, of what has worked for other people. Um, so it's a great intro. Great, so I think, um, you know, in the way that this is broken up, these action items, these are all um, things that hopefully by next week, we'll be able to point back and say, okay, the blog post, we've now um, achieved this, or the SIPs government's proposal, here's the new update. So I think breaking it out in these very action item things, this is a place where everyone in this group can kind of tune in, maybe it's contributing to one or, or multiple of these um, action items. So thank you for that. So now um, I think we can move on to open discussion. Um, so I think, uh, I don't know, Jason, if you had some thoughts on uh, if we should go through these topic by topic or if, um, if people wanted to surface uh, the things that they wanted to discuss. That is something I was open to debate on and just kind of curious as I was setting out the agenda, I thought, hey, if we could just have a little bit of separation on things we can act on, like you were saying, and then things that we make sure we bring to the discussion each week. Um, so for the community research observer, for example, you know, we, we've talked about, we have the bare bones in place essentially, but we don't have an official process that's voted it in or anything like that. Um, so I'm, I'm curious what others think, but I do like that idea. I like the idea of having this list every meeting, having it up on the screen. I actually enjoy reading through the agenda this way. And, from there, if anybody has any comments or wants to bring it to an action item, that might be another next step or way people can interact. And I guess I, I can add a little more to that because some of them I do have a, a few comments on too. So 
two biggest ones um, on this list that jump out to me is that one for the shared resources, I don't understand in my mind how we could all share a Blockstack account. And if it's not possible, that's okay. But I do see a use case for a business account or something that could be shared. And there might be another layer that needs to be built on top or something else. But that's one of the bigger issues that I keep rolling over every week just to get some input on. Because I, I'd love to see that even for the blog, um, if that were possible. Or maybe we just keep it individual with the people. A few things to think about there. And I also linked in the founding document review, just because as we're in these early stages, we talked about it last week, it's good to start looking at mission statement, vision statement, a lot of this work we've done already and research we've done already as everything's coming into form. So those are the two biggest ones for me that I don't have exact action items on, but definitely open for discussion if anybody has any comments. I think yeah. one of the, the blockers is is, um, is 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 time to to concentrate in in, in this important matter, and uh, because you know that uh, as you know that every you know this that we are using we have too many hats on our hands and and uh, we we want to move ahead the technology and on the applications and and also we want to move this uh, forward you know the governance so is how to create a space in order to really work on, on this. I'm like uh, dedicate one day, governance day completely, and then maybe we can get updated on that or up to date, and, and then maybe have a, con uh, a conclusion uh, of, of that. And because, you know, this, because it, it could be a long, a long uh, journey if we keep on not concentrating in a very intensive um, period of time, because in order to, to have all your heads uh, a creative way and, and have a consensus on what we want to do. I do understand what you're saying, Philip, but at the same time, my, my goal or my hope would be to set this up in a way that makes it a little easier to digest in small pieces because I do understand that's that's tough. And Governance Day, that, that sounds to me like a holiday nobody wants. <laughs> but at the same time, it's been a really fun process just putting it all together. And I would be interested in better ways that we can, we can make it into smaller pieces that are easier to digest, just like I said before. Because I, I don't want you to feel burdened um, just by, I mean, even setting up an agenda or something else, I want to make sure that we can cover the parts that we want to cover and that we can actually get in there without um, feeling like we have to spend too much time on it. Yeah, I like the idea, you know, I think that this call every week is a great way to highlight what's happening in the community and really surface the different work streams going on. But I agree that um, this meeting is not great for actually coming to conclusion or consensus around uh, a lot of like major decisions, like things like um, updates to the uh, the foundation um, formation documents or um, about ways to implement the research observer. So perhaps you know these uh, topics could then be broken down into smaller groups, and that way they can kind of async. So it's like if you're interested in a community research observer, um, that would mean that uh, you could collaborate with maybe two or three other people in this working group and then come back with an update next week. And it could be um, surfaced in a way that it's more structured because I agree it may be hard to, to gain expertise or have an opinion about every um, open discussion that we have, but maybe taking some of that um, that effort in really focusing in and then being able to collaborate that way. So I know that we have our Discord channel and that could be a potential way to, to go through some of these discussion topics. Um, but I'm open to yeah, if, thoughts on like whether that works or if it's, or if, you know, structured calls are better. Um, That's a good way to work it in as committees and then bring something, uh, Pre-shoot, uh, pre-shoot, I don't know if this is, <laughs> yeah. 
I'm prepared. <laughs> I definitely appreciate the work that's being done here in um, trying to make things more uh, digestible for everyone who is interested just because governance, even the word, um, makes it sound like we're tackling some really huge issues, which we are. Um, but I, I do think that um, governance um, can mean lots of things in practice. Uh, so some of, uh, you know, like what uh, Brittany was saying, the way that we choose to work is um, a form of governance. And I don't remember who shared this in um, the Discord channel, but I think, Jason, maybe it was you, um, shared a group that um, has been conducting working groups over email for years and has been doing it really effectively. So um, there's some groups out there who do this work um, asynchronously to, you know, in a pretty successful way. And I think part of that is is just understanding what decisions fall under the scope of governance. Um, and you know, so like one of the practical examples of, of governance I'm, I think about a lot is, and I've mentioned this on a few calls, so I'm probably starting to sound like a broken record, but um, community moderation. So giving like a, a snapshot of where we are now um, in the Discord server, for example, there are only a few people who have most permissions. So if you want to start a new channel, if you want to um, delete spam or ban users who aren't following the code of conduct, you have to ask somebody um, with those privileges. And there are only a handful of people who have them. And that to me is not a permissionless system. And I really spend a lot of time thinking about how we can make that permissionless and not only permissionless, but um, a system that we can scale to hundreds of thousands of people, which I'm hoping is um, the size of, of our community, you know, a few years from now. So um, that's something that's pretty foundational to me. And that is a huge part of governance. And um, I can see that kind of thing being worked on in, uh, in various issues on GitHub, hopefully. Um, it's something that I am like happy to give an update about on these calls every week and should anyone want to join forces with me um we could you know coordinate on github or over email um and like i think that would be just as effective as as coming together and talking about it uh every week too so um it's definitely like a work in progress and i feel like we will get more comfortable with this as we go on but i think you know looking back at the the founding document and refining this as we go is is definitely the key so thanks for all of your work on that Jason. Thank you. I just hope I hope it helps everybody get things more organized and I'm and I'm happy to be a part of it. Thank you. It has been. It has it has been. Be sure about that. It has been very useful and helpful. So if anyone has any more comments on these specific open discussions or if there's other topics you you want to um, bring up uh, for this call, I know we have um, agenda that's very efficient. So we have um, we have time to to discuss anything else that's top of mind for people. Uh, the the terms of languages and translation, you know, just uh, pro probably is not so complicated, but it, I think that it could be a problem of structure, is, you know, that uh, how that could be implemented in terms of the of the content. So I don't, I have not seen a, a way, a clear way that uh, it, it could be. Uh, implemented and that's uh, so and then that of course we we should maybe probably uh, select us as, as it was uh, suggested to to concentrate in a couple of these uh, topics each 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 one of us and invite people and then uh, have a, a small meeting or um, study and then try to come up with something and uh, that's an action that we can uh, do now okay yeah i can copy these um discussion items and they are all linked on um, github 
into our Discord group. And that way, if people, you know, like they're like, I want to, if you want to work on number 32, languages and translation, um, and, and find some peers to like work with ideas on that, I think that would be great. It's like we've we've tried to find what an actual step is. We don't know. We have to table it until later. Um, that's, that's also <laughs> a very valid answer. But I think, um, yeah, trying to find a path forward for a, a number of these and which ones the group is most interested in pursuing, I think is, um, to your point, like a great way to actually make make progress towards um, like a, a solution. Okay, um, any other, you know, things or, or um, ideas anyone wants to share? I know that we've had some good discussion this week of sharing a lot of articles in the governance group um, just around, you know, governance gone wrong, <laughs> governance, you know, how to think about it. Um, so I don't know if anyone wanted to surface any thoughts or they have or, or things that they would recommend that others uh, take time to make sure they read if they haven't yet. Um, yeah, I mentioned this uh, earlier in the call, but something I've been looking at and working on is um, examples of contributing guidelines that we might want to adopt for for Blockstack. Um, I can share some of the examples that I've come across that I think are really good. Uh, would love some some feedback from folks here. I know this has come up before, but um, with the technical committee and um, in the foundation, I. I assume this is going to be um, a bigger work stream moving forward. Um, this goes back to you know the issue of, of permissionlessness that I, I mentioned earlier. But at the moment, there isn't really a standardized process for community members to contribute to um, our repos, and I think uh, establishing one could be really great for for scaling and just and for technical governance in general. Um, the two projects that. I've looked at are huge, but they are really good examples. So Adam has uh, crazy comprehensive guidelines and um, Node as well. So I've been looking at those and looking at their theses for how their um, contributing guidelines work and um, why they're so effective for their large communities. So I can share those resources um, and I can also open up an issue about this as well. But um, I did want to get initial thoughts from folks about um, you know, whether we think this is something um, good for, for us to tackle. Uh, I can see us working in collaboration with the proof of transfer group as well, since um, there's a lot of technical expertise there. And um, I assume those folks are the ones who um, are, are probably going to be most affected by um, contributing guidelines in the future. Oh, thanks, Jason. Yeah, so this, this would be specifically for um, for the the like the Stacks blockchain repo, for example. And um, you know, how can someone um, get right access to to a repo? At what point can they be granted those privileges? What would, what would you have to do? Um, it's not clear to me what those those rules are. Um, and like, a, I think that some of this work would be parallel to to SIPs as well. Um, but if we could come up with them, I could see, you know, the open sourcedness of our project really growing and developing as well. Got it. That that definitely makes sense. Thank you. Yeah, no problem. Um, if anyone has any thoughts, please feel free to share. And again, I'll, I'll share all those in an issue and um, share the, those resources as well. Thanks, Jenny. Yeah, that's excellent. Thank you. Great. Well, 
if uh, there are no more comments, then I guess we can give um, some time back to folks here. But um, I, I appreciate everyone joining in and, and thank you, Jason, again, for organizing such a great agenda, very clear action items. Um, I think we have a, you know, a number of work streams. And so uh, being able to work on those, I think is really exciting. Um, also just, uh, you know, sort of upcoming announcements um, around the foundation, I think we'll um, hopefully have uh, some new members join this group. So I think that that will be um, interesting just to get some more perspectives as we grow. So um, yeah, thank you guys all for, for helping make this group what it is. <laughs> All right. Thank you, everybody. I look forward to seeing you on GitHub. Yeah. Thank you very much. And uh, well, I hope you have a rest because it looks like it's very early today. <laughs> early morning and also that also affects. And well, all the best because, you know, we are facing uh, very difficult times in the world and uh, probably also it's affecting. I've, I've seen this uh, same reaction of um, like uh, of quietness and in